Welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And we're going to talk about the debacle that was Charlie's Angels. The, yeah. uh, the box office bomb that was Charlie's Angels. We did a video a couple days talking about it. Now there's uh, there's been sort of a coda, I guess, to this. Yeah. With Elizabeth Banks, uh, you know, of course, throwing shade. And now we've got Paul Feig, the director of uh, also a box office bomb, Ghostbusters 2016, chiming in there because of course he is. Right, because uh, you know, like, it's, 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 according to him, everybody just didn't go because they hated women, and that's not what it was about at all. Um, yeah, so he posted this, and of course I had to say something. Um, he posted, anti-male virtue signaling. God, you guys are so boring. So a movie starring women has an agenda. I thought they said they didn't have an agenda. A movie starring men is just a movie. We sure, we got it. I'm sure Elizabeth is grateful for your mansplaining. Except I was a woman. Thanks for taking the time to be helpful. And then I said, except women didn't go see it either. So... Yeah, the movie made $8 million at the box office, which is, I mean, that is abysmal. That's even, even uh, uh, Terminator did three or four times that. And right. it was a bomb. Mm -hmm. And it was actually, I think, more in your, Terminator was more in your face about the, you know, yeah. strong women, strong women, I think, than the Charlie's Angels was. But yes, yeah, so of course, it's all men. According to, to Paul, it's all men. And they're all, you know, it's, it's it's just, you know, to show women, slap them down, even though women didn't go see it either, Paul. Nobody went to go see That's this That's the point. But the funny thing is, is he pulled this tweet down. This is actually a screenshot from yep. uh, uh, Geeky retweeting this yesterday. He pulled it down probably because the studio probably told him to. Mm -hmm. And he's also promoting another movie now, a, a Christmas movie of his own. And I'm sure they're like, Paul, the last thing you need to be doing right now is getting into a fight on the internet again. Mm -hmm. Because you are comedy gold. No, because he's butt hurt. People didn't like Ghostbusters 2016. And we're going to talk about that. How basically everybody has forgotten about Ghostbusters 2016. They're all pumped for Ghostbusters 3 or uh, Ghostbusters Afterlife or whatever they're going to call this thing. Ghostbusters 2020? Well, it was 3. That was 2020. Now it's going to be supposed, supposedly Ghostbusters Afterlife. Oh, really? I didn't know they changed it We again. don't even know. We don't even know. Ghostbusters. I want a trailer. Where's this trailer? There's no trailer. I don't trailer. know. We'll get it soon, I'm sure. All right. So we're going to talk about that in this episode of Clownfish TV. Please subscribe if you have not done done so already we're at 75,000 subs hoping for 100,000 <laughs> yes. soon hoping for 100,000 I want that play button uh, you know Paul Feig doesn't want us to exist but here we are well no he doesn't want he doesn't want uh, the he says it's all misogyny and men and then you know any woman who like like me and other women out there who are like it just look bad would have step over because you know step a, over them so Elizabeth Banks uh, looking a lot like Jane Fonda and she'll, this, probably take that was, a, she'll take that as a compliment. I thought so. it was Jane Fonda for me. I'm like, hey, it's it's Jane Fonda. No, it's Elizabeth Banks. Uh, she's just shrugging it off. She's just like, well, no. I don't care. Well, here's the thing. Here's the thing. She's shrugging it off now, but this is totally she's shrugging it off after she threw so much shade. It wasn't funny. You did men in her 37 Spider-Man movies and all that. She threw all kinds of shade. People didn't go because you know we can't we have to support women because of men and basically blamed it on misogyny, which was sexist to begin with. Now it's like, well, I meant to do that. It's, it's okay. I, I learned things and I can move on. If you're going to have a flop, make sure your name is on it at least four times. I'm proud of Charlie's Angels and happy it's in the world. Okay, well, she's still got work lined up though. See, that's the right. thing. Like, you know, people don't understand in Hollywood. Like, you're allowed to have a mulligan. You're allowed to to strike out uh, and still be able to rebound. But a lot of People in Hollywood, like they've got their next project and their project after that book. Right. And even if you bomb, like you're not driven out of Hollywood. I mean, I'll give her credit because she's just like you making a joke about it. At least you make your names on it four times. Ha ha ha. So I mean, I'll give her credit for that. Here's the thing, though. The movie probably didn't do well because the advertising for it was absolute crap. That's actually a very legitimate point. We talked about that a little bit on Twitter yesterday. Like nobody, people in the comments on the, the, the movie bombing mm -hmm. video... They're like, we didn't even know the movie was coming out. More often than not, people are like, it's out? I didn't know it was out yet. They didn't even know it was out. They had a big push when the trailer dropped a couple of months ago. And, uh, you know, and then after that, it just disappeared. The last time I heard anything about this movie was they played the trailer before It Chapter 2. Mm -hmm. And I have literally heard nothing about that. I saw no TV spots. I saw no... It might have been. I don't know. No one, everybody kept saying the same thing. I didn't even know it was out. So this here, you know, it might actually go up this weekend, to be fair. If I'm going to be completely fair, it might actually go up on this weekend. People now know it's out because the news... You know, it's out there. Yeah, the bomb. <laughs> so they might go because it's that's out now. And people that went, a lot of people said that it wasn't too bad. But the one they, way they promoted it was, you know, the, the typical way, girl power, you think they promote it. Two, um, 
Nobody knew it was out. The marketing for this was terrible. And then, of course, the media push has to be all, you know, crap on people and everything else. Well, that seems to be like that seems to be the uh, the, the the way things go now with Hollywood. And I, I don't know why. I don't know if a part of it is, you know, the studio is just like, well, we're not we know this one's going to bomb because they can track these movies. We're not going to throw good money after bad. It could be. We're going to let it succeed or fail or whatever. Or they erroneously think that like the internet is going to rush to their defense and be like, well, we put this movie out here for Tumblr. Well, they they're did rush come to their it. defense, but then a lot of people were just like, you're full of crap and called them out for it. Cause well, their defense was men suck, men tanked it, men ruined it. Women love it. And it's for women, but the women didn't go either. Nobody was talking about this movie at all. They talked about the trailer when it first came out. So nobody could have ruined anything. They just didn't give a shit. They didn't you even know? know, or they no. did care. They didn't know it was, I mean, well, they couldn't care too much. They didn't even know when it released. Yeah, so nobody ruined this movie. That's the problem. Nobody went to the movie. Nobody knew the movie was coming out. Nobody cared. That is the problem. Right, and then, so stop blaming men. Because because I'm honestly, at those numbers, women didn't go either. Nope. So, oh, and then, don't you know, it's because if it had been a Marvel film, Everybody goes. The only reason that these that that cat this is actually insulting to to. I mean, I'm not a big huge fan of Captain Marvel, but this is kind of insulting to Captain Marvel that the only reason anybody went to see Captain Marvel was because it was part of of the Marvel universe. Which I'm not saying she's 100 percent wrong. She, she's, she's not she's wrong. Not. <laughs> she's not wrong. People, but you know, I think it's kind of like we need women power. We need characters like Captain Marvel, and then she disses Captain Marvel. Yeah. So I mean, this is this is where it gets very like out of one side of your mouth and the other with with Charlie's Angel because on one side of her mouth Elizabeth thanks is like you know uh people don't go see female-led movies but then you know everybody brags about how captain marvel made a ton of money yeah despite the woman. haters and wonder, and wonder woman. woman so you can't say that nobody goes to see a female-led movie when you have examples of female-led movies that did well at the box office but here's the thing they were part of a bigger thing which she brings up but they also had they also spent the money to market it and yeah uh, captain marvel was questionable about how many tickets were actually really sold but that's a whole other video entirely uh wonder woman actually didn't didn't think it was going to do well it actually started out slow and then because of word of mouth it picked up yeah wonder woman was weird they did not expect wonder woman to do well and then she was like the number one movie for like two or three weeks it was really good that's you why know, people um, saw it They're like oh my gosh it's actually good go see it and then that's why it had the legs it had well, same thing happened with joker where they actually did not have very high expectations for joker mm. they put a good movie out there and it was a surprise hit you know Even so with the media trying to tank these things you yeah know? right so, I mean, it's just like, yeah, Captain Marvel, and I'm not going to disagree because it was the last, it was the last Marvel movie before Endgame. So people probably thought I have to see this to understand well, her argument on. is because Wonder Woman and Captain Marvel did well, but only because they were leading up to Endgame and to, to Justice League, but Elite. no one cared about the Justice League movie. And what about Alita, which, yeah. I know, I was going to say that. What about those kind of movies? Alita was a standalone film. It was not part of a bigger universe. It was a risk because it was based on uh, a pretty old manga, an anime series. And it still got a lot of positive buzz. But here's what here's what she said. Um, she goes, they all go see a comic book movie with Wonder Woman and Captain Marvel because of a male, it's a male genre. Oh, okay. Um, well, first of all, you know, is it more, do, do these movies t tend to, to skew more towards men? Yes. Does that mean that they're only for men? No. Because actually a lot of times when these movies would come out, the comic book movies came out, who was the most excited to go see them? You were. I was. I, Neil, I was like, I don't care. And I'm like, I want to go see it. It looks so good. Well, here's, okay. Now here's part of the issue too. And we're going to get into that. 70s Charlie's Angels. I'm look, if you want to go there, it was for male audiences too because the women were easy on the eyes. Mm -hmm. That was part of the, the, the allure of Charlie's Angels back in the 70s was wow, look at Farrah Fawcett, mm -hmm. you know, um, in a bikini. Here she goes on it, whatever. That was part of the hook. Now, women watched it too, obviously. I did, but men were watching it because they're like wow look at uh farrah fawcett you know this version they went out of their way i think to make sure the women weren't uh uh subject to the male gaze let's put it that way so you've immediately kind of cut down on your audience potential well, audience that's what guys said the guys said you guys kind of told us not to go because it wasn't for us it was for women and he goes and if we had gone it would have been we would have been told we were bad people because it was the male gaze that's the only reason we went right so you can't win well they were doing that they were doing that to the 2000 charlie's angels which i actually liked the 2000 i thought was pretty cool uh i thought was funny but 
they threw shade at the the 2000 Charlie's Angels just being like, oh, it was all about people watching, you know, Cameron Diaz, you know, her booty shake or whatever. And I'm like, the thing is, is the source material, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't have to like that audience, but that it, it is what it I is. I just don't think the source material is strong enough to carry a whole nother reboot again. And yeah, people are just, just tired of reboots. Yeah, they just did it. It's another reboot. We don't give a shit. People are tired of reboots. Um... Yeah. But anyway, her argument is because the uh, Captain Marvel and Wonder Woman did well because they're made for men, because it's a comic, because those comic book movies are the male genre, and they were like part of, they were leading up to um, like Justice League and yeah. and that and that's true on some level. I mean, I wouldn't argue that for Justice League because that the, the previous movies did not do well in the DC no. But um, you could argue that. For, I mean, I definitely argue that for Captain Marvel because I don't think that was that was that great. Of a we movie. saw empty theater. The theater we went in was pretty. Oh, and now pretty empty. And now there's people saying that she'd be amazing at doing a Marvel movie and she should do a Marvel movie. Anyway, um, uh, they said she's, I'm happy for those characters to have box, box office success, but we need more women's voices supported with money because that's the power, and the power is in the money. She's not wrong. She's not wrong. But what I'm saying is, but there's okay, there's a difference between we need more female voices supported with money to make good movies, not to make movies that are you know it, it, it's coming to cliche I'm sorry but it's a cliche so what let's put the okay so she was if I'm not mistaken she also was the writer director producer of pitch perfect yeah, she did the pitch perfect movies which were box office hits and they weren't about and they didn't do this whole I mean it was happening it was, they were good they have to be about they were funny and they had about women that were doing this stuff but it wasn't like you know because we're the best because we're women you know what I mean they did yeah. make the men look stupid in the first one, though. Yeah, but, okay, beyond that, though, she put movies out that were successful enough to have not one but two sequels, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it was a sleeper hit. I remember everybody talked about how Pitch Perfect was a sleeper oh, hit. Oh, our daughter loves it. She watches it over and over and over again. Yeah, um, and some of the scenes in that movie she probably shouldn't watch. I know, but she does. She loves she loves Pitch Perfect. And it launched the careers of of, of several uh, women in Hollywood. Well, I don't know if it launched them, but, well, it, you know. Well, put them on the radar. Right. Right. So... It was a success. It also was not a reboot. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, thank God, something new. Uh, they they put it out there and they did not feel the need to run down the potential audience mm -hmm. uh, for it. They did not expect it to be a hit. It was. Um, it resonated with people. So I guess my feeling is, you know, you did it before with an original IP, Elizabeth. You did it before. Why go back to the well with Charlie's Angels? Uh, and and do it badly, you know. Well, that's not like... one thing she's taking over. I forgot about this. She's also going to be taking over. Where did I put it? Right here. Um, I knew we mentioned this before. We did mention this. Before, They're going to yeah. do DC superhero high comedy from Elizabeth Banks. Now they have to do DC superhero girls. So this is DC superhero high. So it's all of these. I'm assuming all of DC superheroes, men and boys and girls. Um, is she going to make sure that all the men are stupid so that the women, you know, and if you don't watch it, are you sexist? Uh, probably Bruce Wayne's going to be toxic entitled uh, white well, of male. Of course, he's going to be toxic entitled white male. They're going to, you know, yeah. they're, they're I mean, he basically gonna... is, and he's also um, so, yeah, severely so, damaged. So but... <laughs> yeah, so they're going to be talking about a group of teenagers attending a boarding school for gifted children. DC Superhero High is a half an hour comedy series, executive produced by Elizabeth Banks. Just what everybody wanted. Which follows a group of students experience the fun and drama of adolescence at a boarding school for gifted kids. That's the wrong, the wrong comic book company. You're, you're thinking of X Men. <laughs> yeah, X-Men. These, these teens are just um, trying to navigate the pressures of high school. But none of them realize that someday they'll be legendary DC superheroes. It's going to be produced by Brownstone Productions and associated with Warner Horizon scripted television. Um, so it's going to be, you know, Fuller House writer. Oh my God. Uh, no. Fuller another Fuller House guy. <laughs> uh, just, just joined in Fuller House, according to Jim. And, and then, you know, Shrill, which she also was part of. What uh, could possibly go wrong? Let's let's turn uh, DC superheroes into a live action sitcom for HBO Max. For HBO Max, what could possibly go? And you know what's going to happen? There's going to be backlash because again, you're taking an established property. Well, if they treat it fairly, there won't be. But you know damn well they're not going to. I, on the outside, from my armchair observation Sounds point stupid. here, right? <laughs> It sounds to me like Elizabeth Banks is desperately trying to break into the superhero action genre. That's what I think is going on. And she's ass mad that it's not going according to plan. Because she's jealous of Captain Marvel and Wonder she, Woman. I think she wants to direct one of those. Is yes. That's the whole thing is. That's, and this is probably her entryway into it. Like, yeah, Pitch Perfect was a hit, but she doesn't want to be a rom-com mm -hmm. uh, director. She wants bigger, better things. And there's nothing wrong with that. 
but you know you're not going to score points with uh, the people who go see that movie if you. Well, you know we, we, we all need it. a Marvel rom com, so. I, what could possibly go wrong? What could possibly uh, possibly go wrong? So, um, you know, this is the this is the thing. Like, you know, back to to Paul Feig. I think he's he's just jumping in whenever he can because he's when asked he's mad. out. I need to get to this. Yeah, and he's asked mad that basically the internet has forgotten about Ghostbusters 2016. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, it's gonna be like one of those one-offs. They're already, the marketing, they're already, now they kind of were before the DVDs, but they're calling it Answer the Call so they can separate it from yeah. the rest of Ghostbusters. And, um, you know, any opportunity he has to throw shade, uh, he does. He was kind of ass mad when people were were excited about the Ghostbusters 3 teaser trailer. Mm -hmm. you oh know? yeah, well he has to stay relevant. He has to He's say got a movie out right now. And a the Christmas movie, movie a rom com. A, a Christmas movie, which I, I, mean, I don't know how I was doing it. I didn't see it yet. But I know people were talking that they didn't even know what it was about because the trailers were so disjointed. People were like, I don't really understand what this is supposed to be about. And um, that I haven't seen it at all. But that's what people, you know, these blogs were saying leading up to it. But anyway. Yeah, but I wanted to bring this up because, uh, you know, in, in the case of, uh, you know, Charlie's Angels, in the case of Ghostbusters 2016, uh, I get the feeling that 2015, after four years, is finally coming to an end. I, I hope. Because a lot of these movies, a lot of these uh, ill-fated comic book series and animated series and, and hot takes on, um, you know, established pop culture, attacking the fans, all that seem to originate around 2014, 2015. Mm -hmm. And we're starting to see that pendulum uh, swing back. But, you know, back to Paul Feig again and throwing shade at comic book movies, uh, he was throwing shade at Joker just a couple of weeks ago because he's like, the director of Joker said that woke culture is ruining comedy ruining movies it is it, it, it you know there's it's a you know you can be supportive of different uh, agendas and ideas and stuff but there's a difference between you know you you support these things and constantly having it shoved in people's faces and you know mocking people calling them you know all that stuff nazis yeah exactly but, but paul feig yeah he refuted uh joker todd phillips who todd phillips basically came out and said we are getting to the point now where we're trying too hard to be woke i, I agree you know we're trying too hard to take take things and, and make them something they're not. We're trying too hard not to defend people that we make boring movies. Isn't that Tracy Ullman thing you showed me? Oh my God, that Tracy Ullman skit. If you have a chance, go out and watch uh, uh, Tracy Ullman. She did a skit on, um, it was basically a, a, a sort of like a woke anonymous uh, class. Somebody sent it to us on Twitter and I thought it was hilarious. And, and she's basically like, just, just freaking just shut up and watch Friends and don't get offended. And yeah, live anyway, your life. Yeah, go back and, to this. But he was all mad about, you know, it's like, I've never had a hard time not offending people and still getting laughs, but we all work differently. The sour grapes, the same with Elizabeth Banks. It's sour grapes that other people put movies out there that the internet did not hate, you know, but they're also, they're also just putting a good movie out there and not, not, throwing their hot takes That's out there with it. That's what I keep saying. It. Just make a good movie with good characters and, you know, good story, and it'll be fine. You can put some of your ideas in there as long as you're not making it the main focus. If your main focus is a good movie that just happens to have that in it, okay, if your focus is, let's do a movie about this, it's going to fail. Yeah. It's going to fail. I'm sorry. People are sick of your crap. But in Feig's case, in, in uh, Banks' case, like, you guys have had more success just doing your own thing. Like, people are not going to, uh, you know, riff on a movie as hard if it's not an established IP. And that's what these people don't understand. Like, you know, when you take an established IP, you get everything, warts and all, you get the fandom that comes with that IP. Okay, and if you can't handle that, if you can't handle the fact that they're going to have certain expectations, mm -hmm. uh, then maybe you should just go do another movie that has no attachment to anything and you can just put it Make out Make your there. own damn fan base. Make your own fan base. Exactly. It's same with cartoons, same with the animation. Um, these people, they want the brand recognition, but it comes with a price and that that price right. is the fandom and they and need to i mean are you going to make everybody happy no there's no way in hades you're going to make everybody happy but what you can do is you can try to focus on the larger amount of fans that you can make happy and that's going to work to your advantage both in the box office and you know for, through word of mouth and all that but what they're doing is they're taking these big properties and they're making them for this new idea because the dinosaurs is that what you're saying because they're yeah, the dinosaurs. Dinosaurs. we're going to take it with the dinosaurs and make it for the new you know fresh people that we need to bring in and what you're doing is you're just ruining it and you're just and then you're getting a lot of crap and then no one cares yeah i mean quite frankly that's and not every all publicity is good publicity no they're learning that's not the case yeah and they're for years again 2015 is coming to an end for years i saw in comic book blogs 
uh, them referring to OG comic book fans as literally as dinosaurs. These are dinosaurs. They're going to die off. We're going to take over the comic book industry. Dinosaurs, dinosaurs, dinosaurs. Now it's turning into Jurassic Park. And uh, they can't they can't handle it, you yeah. know, because the dinosaurs are biting back. But um, this, again, this is that double, that two-faced, you know. Um, I blame men. Blame men. That's what she did. She blamed men. The same, the same media outlets that are like, you know, men are toxic. Men are the problem. Men don't go see female-led action films. These are the same media outlets that attacked uh, the Alita army. Right. In fact, hashtag Alita Army, as I understand it, has been uh, sort of blacklisted from Twitter. It's oh, been has ghosted. It? Yeah. Somebody was telling me about the other day. They said that Twitter is sort of muting posts with the Alita Army hashtag when people were trying very, very hard to get folks to go see Alita. See, um, the takeaway for me for that time frame was going on because it was coming out at the same time. It came out before Captain Marvel, but yeah. around the same time, was hell yeah, we got two female led movies. That should have been the takeaway. But it wasn't. It was, oh no, Alita might hurt Captain Marvel. Yeah. So we have to put Alita down because men like Alita and they're not liking Captain Marvel, mostly because the actress was making stupid comments. But um, you know, and then so you 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 can't say I don't want we need more female led movies, and then when you get one. Yeah, deliberately driven, you can't tank it because it might hurt the darling. And now you're complaining about the darling now. Because yeah. the darling only was a darling because it was in a, it was a male, it was for a male genre. But you just got done saying it wasn't for men. Make up your damn mind. Stop making, how, how about you just make good things and stop making excuses? There's an idea. You want men to go see it? You want, men, women didn't go see this crap. They might now because marketing sucked and it could be the marketing. We don't know yet. But just make good things and stop blaming it on men. There you go. That's I'm that's how saying. that's how we're gonna end it. We're gonna end it. Make good things. Uh, stop blaming uh, people for not seeing your movie because if they didn't go see it, they had no interest in going to see it. That's right. Women didn't go either. Where we at? Grow up. Stop. All right. So we're gonna wrap this up. Please subscribe for yes. more pop culture news, views, and rants here on Clownfish TV. I'm sorry. You're just looking at me. <laughs> All right. All right. Yeah. Bye. Goodbye. Hey guys, thanks for watching Clownfish TV. Please consider supporting the channel. Go to clownfishsupport.com. That's clownfishsupport.com. And if you want to join our community, go to clownfishtalk.com. That's clownfishtalk.com. Please subscribe, ring the bell for notifications. We will talk to you next time.